Okay, so now I'm over here in Unreal World. So I've got um, just a couple of things here. I have a material for the metal and a material for the glass, and then the level that it actually is. These are just regular textures for the color and roughness for the metal. Uh, if we look at the metal material, there's not much to it. Again, just a color and roughness, easy. The glass is more complicated, but you know you can copy a glass material from Unreal's defaults and stuff. It doesn't really matter, but this is the one that I'm using. Uh, either way, they're not set up to do the VAT stuff. We're going to do that together. So go to your export folder here for train time or whatever. We've got the VAT glass and VAT material. So bring them and just drag them over. That's going to be the FBX files and the texture files. So right now it's asking about the FBX files. So click reset the default or, or whatever. Uh, we need to change a bunch of these options. And the best way to do it is if you go back to Houdini for a second, click on one of these VAT things, go to real time shaders, and then Unreal Engine content plugins and guides. If you click that, it will bring up um, this folder, choose one of them, and go to VAT import settings guide. This is what we're interested in, FBX import settings. That's what we're doing right now. So first, turn every toggle off. Fair enough. So boom, 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 boom. Make sure you got these uh, you know, things actually open, so make sure that you're seeing everything. Turn everything off. And then that's just so that we have a agreed baseline of where to start and then start turning things back on. So vertex color import option replace. Sure. Um, where are you? Vertex replace. Make this a little wider. Replace. There you go. We got that, although we're not actually importing colors, so who cares? Transform vertex to absolute. Definitely need that on. Keep that there. Import mesh LEDs. Uh, we're not doing that. Just stay off, stay off. Normal import method, import normals and tangents. Normals and tangents. Import uniform scale. That's this one. It's already at one, so it's fine. Convert scene to on. Definitely put that on, or else it'll be coming outside because the coordinate system's different in Houdini versus Unreal. Override full name. Sure. Why not? Material import method, do not create material. Yeah, don't, because we already have materials and render material to FPX order on. Awesome. And there you go. So click uh, import all because it's going to be doing this for the glass and for the metal. Give it a moment. Um, again, it's, it's importing those new FPX meshes and it's going to be a texture for the position for every point in the metal or for every tr uh, actual rigid body in the rigid one, and then the rotations. So control click your uh, textures here. You'll see, it'll say filter default, kind of halfway down the list of things. That's not what we want. Right click this and go to scripted asset actions and say set F, uh, this one with the HDR one. Click that. Now if you hold your mouse here, it should say I feel like it still says the wrong thing. Well, let's try again. I've had this happen before. HDR. Well, it's supposed to change it to nearest. Uh, yeah, there we go, I said to save it. Weird. So it's set to the nearest, so that's correct. Now let's just drag our train in there. And I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna put it at zero, zero, zero. That way we can also drag the glass in, put that at zero, zero, zero. So there's our, our old friends. So I can say, let's put the, let's go back to the tutorial area here. So on the metal, we can put the metal material. There you go. You know, it's pre-textured. And then put the glass, or sorry, click the glass, put it here. And there you go glassy. We can see the edges of the broken glass. Uh, what you would probably really want to do is 
have an unbroken version also that you could switch to, but we're just gonna, for the sake of time, we're just gonna keep it like this for now. So there it is. Now there's no actual VAT stuff set up yet. So we need to actually enable this stuff to read the textures in these folders here, these guys. So we'll start with the metal. So open the metal up and move this down here. I'm gonna type uh, soft. Now you really don't worry about the fact that I have three of these. Just, uh, this is the old one, and then I have two copies for some reason. Uh, just choose one of them. MF VAT soft body deformation. Sorry about that side effects, but uh, I didn't get that fixed in time. Doesn't matter, MF VAT soft body deformation, there it is. Um, all we really need from this is two things. Well, well, three things, I guess. World position offset's the most important one. Connect it to the corresponding thing. We also want the normal tangent space normal off, it's telling you, turn the tangent space normal off on the material. So type in tangent, and there it is, tangent space normal, off. Because it's gonna handle that itself over here. And then also we have all these custom UVs down here. Just, um, there's four of them, so type five actually over here, and connect four to four three to three, and so on. And that's it. If we had a normal texture going in here, because here I only have color and roughness, if I had a normal plugged in here, you need to unplug it so that this can go here, and you need to plug it in here instead. Well, we're gonna do that uh, for the glass, actually. So save that. Now, it's still not enough to do anything, except make it compile some stuff. In order to plug in our actual textures, we need to make a material instance. And the material instance will have slots to do it. Okay. So it's all broken now, which is fine, because we're not going to use, we're going to, you know, we need to plug in the other stuff. So right click on the metal, go to create material instance. And that is what will go on here instead. It's still broken, because we still haven't actually hooked anything up to it. But now when we look at the exposed parameters, there's this whole Houdini VAT section here now. Position texture and rotation texture are the first two things that we care about. So go to VAT metal, texture, put position in position, and rotation, rotation. And you can see, there it is, it's doing it already. Wild, right? First thing we need to change is we notice it's playing very fast. So we need to change the FPS to 24, because in our case, that's what we simulated at. So that's cool. And do inter-frame interpolation. I just think that's beneficial. It'll, you know, interpolate between frames. So if we're running at 60 here, it'll, or 120 or whatever we're happening in our viewport, it'll, it's just a smoother playback. It'll figure out the frames in between. Auto playback is on right now. That's why you're seeing it. If we turn it off, uh, it'll stop doing that. And we can drive the display frame ourselves so that we can have it play when we want. But I'll keep it on for now because it's fun. So save that. So now we need to do the same for the glass. So come back out here, go to the glass. Uh, as I mentioned, we need to get rid of the normal, the map here, or not get rid of it, get rid of it, but just move it to the side for a minute. Start typing uh, rigid. Choose MF VAT rigid by dynamics. And again, on your computer, it will probably just be the only thing that shows up. Put the surface map in here now and put world's position offset and put normal here. Sometimes the normal here doesn't work quite right uh, with the rigids, I've noticed. So we'll see. Um, this one, for whatever reason, seems like it already has the UV set to five. I probably, I bet the tangent's already off on it too. No, it's not. So turn it off. Um, we gotta hook up these UVs though. So four, oops, three, two, one, and like so. So save that. Same thing, we need to make an instance in order for it to actually expose the textures to us. 
So go to Glass, Create Material Instance, open it up. Here's the Houdini VAT stuff again. We're gonna want the auto playback one, the playback speed, the or not the playback speed, the FPS one, the interflame interpolation one, position and rotation. So here's glass, here's texture. So the position goes in the position, rotation goes in rotation, and save goes in save. And oh, and we didn't actually apply it. So there's the glass, it's still using the old one. So go to instance, there you go. Same issue, this should be 24. Nice. Look at that, it's working. We need the, see how it's kind of uh, j uh, jittery though? Because we're not doing the interframe, uh, interframe interpolation. Uh, for some reason it recompiles the shader when you turn that on, but you know, there we go. Now it's done. Pretty cool, pretty friggin' cool that we are able to do that here in Unreal now. And you know, you can fly around it and your characters can look at it and be like, oh my God, the trains are crashing. So turn off the auto playback on that and on the, once this is done. So, cause we're gonna drive it ourselves now. So now nobody's doing anything anymore. And the very last thing I wanna show you in this tutorial is sequencer. So go to cinematics, add level sequence, and we'll just put it in here. Uh, tutorial level sequence. This will allow us to drive things like that display parameter. Um, what I mean is if we were to look at the glass instance here, we see display frame, by changing it, it just asks for a different frame from that texture. So that's what we want to actually have happen here. But we're not gonna do it ourselves. We're gonna have the sequencer do it. So let's start with the metal. So drag it into here. It tries to, it wants you to key the transform. I don't care about that, so delete it. Go to track, go to static mesh component, track, material, and then display frame. I'm gonna delete the keyframe we have here. Let's start on frame one, uh, make it be value one, keyframe it. Then go to frame 48, have it be frame 48. And let's also turn, bring this all the way back here. So now if I press play in here, you can see it's playing it. Now the sequencer controls that, controls the frame that it's on. We need to do the same thing for the glass. Exact same thing in every way. Track the stack mesh component, element zero, which is again the material and the display frame. Oops, should not have left that there. So go to frame one, keyframe it. I'll put it actually frame one on frame one. Same thing here, 48, put 48, there you go. Now these are actually um, not linear keyframes. These are like delightfully smoothed out. So just highlight them all, uh, right click on one of them and ch click linear. And I just don't want it to like soft ramp in and out of those keyframes. We've already done all that ourselves in Houdini. And there you go. That's it, we're done. <sighs> Pretty cool. So yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, you know, the most of it was really about setting things up in Houdini itself. Uh, it's really not that scary to make Sims anymore. You know, we did this whole thing in an hour, I think, pretty much, from beginning to end. A pretty high quality Sim overall. Um, you know, you could up the resolution on anything, all these things. You could have multiple VATs. You could have uh, a regular train that's just being transformed behind it. If you did, if you want to concentrate your VAT stuff just where it matters, um, you got options. The important thing is that you know how to do it. So go have fun experimenting with it. And that's it. Goodbye.